This episode of Co-op is brought to you by Netflix, Squarespace, and GoDaddy.com. The overworld of Zelda plus one. The mechanics of Street Fighter, but there's a flavor, a flavor that's missing. Banana pancakes. Whoa, whoa. What is that what smell in here, man? Oh my god, Ryan, have you showered in like the last six Ugh. days? Why does it matter to you? What? Let me be. Dude, you stink. Yeah. Look, I started playing some independent games and I got a spark and vision and I I had to start working immediately. Well, we've been, we've been playing yeah, uh, we're Plants vs. Zombies. You touched it yet on the iPhone? Yeah, it just came out. And it works like, better than the PC. Oh, I just unlocked uh, the, the cabbages in the corn. You guys don't fucking understand, do you? That is like the opposite of indie. What? What well, are you talking about? I realized that the only truly independent experience that I could create for myself is if I made my own independent game. And so, oh, I'm dude, working on something here. That's you awesome. Made dude, really? Yeah. You made your own game. That's cool. It's not done yet, but I'm... Well, sweet, can I play it? Yeah, let us see it. Yeah, yeah, let me play it. Come on, man, please. Come on, dude, please. Come on. Fine, but not a word of this to anybody, okay? Scout's honor. Done deal. Awesome. Oh, so oh. this is it? You got it up now? Sweet. Okay, dude, cool. Man. So... Dude, fucking insulting, man. What? Put the headphones on. Audio oh, is not the oh, experience. Right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Audio is a big yeah, part of the gaming Matt, experience. I know. On. I know. I'm sorry. Jeez. Should uh, should is it loading or something? Do you want me to play the game for you? No, no. I mean, experience I, I it yourself. Okay, okay, I want to experience it. I do. Is there like a brightness setting? Cause it's it's really dark. Yeah, it looks a little dark, man. Like my soul. Um. I'm not, and I'm not really hearing anything. And how does that make you feel? Huh. Kind of like it's broken? I don't know, dude. I don't think there's... Uh, uh, guys? Ah. Yeah. That, that's a mistake, actually. Shit. What a was more like a video game We would play it all co-op The misadventure, we're going along with the misadventures of PB Winterbottom here. We're gonna do our own little misadventure here. We're gonna try playing games live yes. in front of the audience. This so is being played right now. This is being played right now. I, I have a controller. A <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, That's some scary shit. That is scary. Uh, also, remember to tweet to at Co op Live. Jason over here is going to be here throughout the show addressing all of the questions. Jason, remember to raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a yeah. good test. Yep. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, like, let's just start right into PB Winterbottom here, and this this first stage that we're seeing uh, is awesome yeah. because it totally sets up the whole story, and I kind of love that about PB Winterbottom because we've seen nonlinear narratives before in games, mm -hmm. but. PB Winterbottom, the way that it does it, you don't realize that it's a nonlinear narrative until you've gone through the rest of the game, and you're like. All this stuff was set up in the first like level or two that I played, and uh, when it finally struck me, I felt like I was like, "Why wasn't I paying closer attention to this?" It was just, it was awesome, and it's it's totally the kind of flavor that you get out of indie games. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, you know, it's it's it fits in that the the sort of puzzler platformer genre that we saw, you yeah. know, kind of with Braid. Um, and this is similar to Braid in that it, it is a, it's a 2D side scroller and there's platforming involved in that it, you, it deals a lot of the puzzles are manipulating time. Right. One it's of true. the things I like about the narrative though is like this, that I've never seen before. Like I loved in Shadow Complex when uh, you know the 
the story was told for in the middle of the 2D gameplay, yeah. you know, rather yeah. than being told in a cutscene that starts switching camera angles right. and stuff. And this game actually does it really well. If you, if we cut to the footage right here, um, you'll see that PB, I'm, I'm platforming along here, and he to show like time passage and to show like to make like it's it's a, a montage almost. The world flips around. Whoops, I fucking died. <laughs> the world flips around as I jump through this stage right here. Yeah, I've just never seen any sort of this, the the actual level change as you great. play like mm -hmm. it does in this. And it never takes control away from me. I'm like, always controlling. Yeah, like here. you said, it's, it's a montage in gameplay. Yeah. And yeah, I, I'm they, not sure. They only I've do it that. this one time in the game. So I yeah. kind of wish we'd see some more of it. But it's, it's definitely something I'd like to see other games kind of rip off. It, it, it was really well done in this and game. Well, and it shows like an entire journey. Like he's been chasing sort of, I don't know, his ultimate dream pie, whatever this he's is. He's <laughs> like the hamburger, but with pies. Yeah. Right. Right. He's got to have pie. That's what PB Winterbottom stands for. Pie burglar. Pie burglar. Yes. Pie bur no, That's it's peanut it. butter. <laughs> totally peanut butter yeah, Winterbottom. I'm with Ryan on this one. It's got I have no idea yeah. what it is. <laughs> but the but that's you know that's just a really cool example of uh, these guys clearly wanted to make their own thing, but they wanted to put their own twist on it, mm -hmm. and uh, and they did it, and they did it effectively. Um, that stage was super super cool. But yeah, it, it's it's dealing a lot of um, in this situation. You're manipulating time in the way that you're creating clones of yourself to right. solve puzzles. And with each within each of the stages, they have basically how, you're given a certain amount of clones that you can use, and um, other little parameters that they'll they'll throw in for fun. The difference that this is from something like Braid, for an example, is that though that you can you and your clones can actually interact with each other. You can jump on their heads. You can smack them. And um, it's a perfect example of it right there. And that yeah. sort of. Uh, Adds to the whole like play uh, that you could sort of like mess around with. Yeah, well, then the, the basic mechanic reminded me a lot of uh, when I was watching you play Ratchet and Clank Future. Uh, oh, like the Clank stages. Yeah, like yeah, the Clank stages. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, if you throw something or if you smack something, um, that carries through um, through your actual character, and then they can actually interact with each other, which adds a really fun element to the puzzle solving. You could see here, you know, he has to hit a switch to get these pies in sequential order, right. but also sort of get within there at the same time. And you can see how you could just go from one, one clone to the other. It's, yeah, it's cool. going to be tricky, because we're going to try not to show the answers to yes. too many of these puzzles. Right. We, all, yeah. we, we have all beat the much. game now, and so we want to make sure that we don't like you know spoil anything for you out there. But uh, we still want to show you how cool the game is. So. Right. Uh, well, this and, and well, this is a good this is a good illustration of just how cool the, the mechanics in PB Winterbottom can be. Mm -hmm. um, I also really found it enjoyable the way that those mechanics seem to tie into the overall, overall narrative again. Like I said, you know, you have sort of this nonlinear narrative, and the gameplay is sort of nonlinear as well. So you have to think of these clones in in a way that you you know it's not just a point A to B thing. You have to think reciprocally a lot of the time. And so it's like, I need to generate a clone, and then my clone needs to do something while I'm doing something while I'm generating another clone. And yes. then those, I, it's kind of a mind fuck, but in a good way. Yeah, you have this, the, the puzzle sort of range from these like fairly simple sort of ones to figure out to just mind numbingly hard, you right. know, that are just, there's a very specific way, at least that it seems like, you know, we were talking about there's puzzles where it seems like you have multiple ways of solving those puzzles. Yes. Maybe two or three different options oh, and you I could sort of I actually have a good example play around with that. Oh yeah, 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 go, go to that to one. A yeah. Really good stage for that. Oh yeah, 5-1. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Five one totally agree. And so this this is, a, World 5 is the last world in the game, but this first stage is pretty straightforward, but it's also like a really, really good stage to show everybody what we mean by there's multiple ways to solve a puzzle. Because I really feel like some of these puzzles in the game are clearly really hard, and it really seems like there's got to be only one way to solve this puzzle. But there's other puzzles where it's like, uh, especially here in World 5, when I was watching Ryan play a couple days ago, I was like, wow, he beat that that level totally differently yep. than I did. Yep. Right. So here in this stage, um, they introduce a new mechanic. They do this in each of the worlds, but the mechanic in this stage is that you have to see that light that's around the pie there? You can only grab the pies if the light is surrounding your, your you or your clone, and you right. can kind of move the light between you and your clone. So I'm just gonna set up a little simple clone here that walks from this spot right to here. Like that, and it'll keep looping over and over again. And, As clones uh, are wont to do. What I, when I hit the button here, the light will transfer, and then I can take it all the way over, and that would beat the stage right there, but I'm, I'm gonna stop right here and restart it so I can show you that I can build a totally different clone that does something totally different and still beat the stage in the same way. So, sorry, well, loads here. This is a really pretty stage. I would, love to, I would like to go to this set. Um, well, on, like, on all the puzzles, it's really clever. Uh, uh, every stage is 
pretty much only one screen. Yeah. You know, the, there's hardly any side scrolling. There is in the no game. side scrolling. Yeah, there's just that one room where you need to solve the puzzle, and then once uh, you have collected all your pot, there, look at that, got hit, and boom. yep, totally different way, way to solve two that. Two different puzzle. ways to solve that. Yep, and you know that that stage is pretty open and pretty simple. There's that one switch, and there's I bet there's other ways that you could do that. Bounce different PB winner bottoms. Yeah. Bounce your clone instead of your clone bouncing you, and uh, I really think that there's going to be that. There's going to be a lot of videos coming out of people solving stages in ways we never even, even could have even thought of. Even the stages, I mean, we're, we're pretty certain. Let me go to an example of a stage that we think can only be solved in one way, and we're right. going to not solve it because... We uh, don't want to spoil it for you. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's one of the hardest puzzles in the game. Yeah. But, I hated um, this one. I mean, I loved this one. <laughs> you love it. I hated this one. Love you it. loved it. Oh, I um, loved it. I spent it. a good two hours just staring at it, being like, are you serious? What am I missing here? I did Which didn't. is great. <laughs> Got right through it. <laughs> yeah, no, when I saw your tweet that you had beat it right away, I was I was pretty angry about yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know. It must be that I'm a super genius, but I didn't have any problem with All right, BB to sort of set up goodness. To set up what you have to do in this stage, these pies, see if I walk over and try to grab it, I can't actually get it. Only only my clone can grab that, that pie. Yeah, blue pies are clone only. So you have to figure out a way to get your clone to get these pies in the order in which they're numbered. And you can see there's a four way over the fire, and then five, six, and seven are on the left side of the screen there. And, and you can only generate one clone. If you look in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, you might not be able to see this if you're watching on something that you know has doesn't can't quite get that corner. But it has a zero and a one. Right. That means you can only have one clone active at a time. And on top of that, you are working within a very tight time limit as far as when those pies are available. You can see once your clone it will hit one, you see how two becomes available. It's flashing, and then it's going to disappear, and that's you lose your opportunity. So you have to grab those in sequential order in a really quick way. Yep. And anytime you interact with a clone in progress, it kind of takes away its its yeah. memory, its animation. See how he's a dummy now? He won't do the animation that yeah, I had. Yeah, they him say at the before. beginning of the game that anytime you interrupt a clone's path, that they're just going to be, you know, they become a dummy, like you right, said. Right, exactly. So it makes it really difficult because, like, here you'd let, you know, you'd think, oh, if I just hit this guy over here at the right time, that would be great. But maybe, and maybe I can get him to hit me over the other direction, but it doesn't really work no. that way. And so. It ends yeah. up being a much harder puzzle to solve than yeah, good uh, job jumping than in the fire. Figure out. But I'm not going to show you uh, how to solve it because nope. that would be cheating. Uh, guys, um, what? Oh, oh, oh Jason, okay. Jason, do you have to go to the bathroom or something? What's wrong? No, I got a question here. Oh, from, the community uh, has the community. a question. Uh, <laughs> most people are asking like, what platform this game is, is for? Is it just for Xbox or is there is it coming to um, PSN or WiiWare or anything like that? As far as I know, it's just Xbox. Yeah, right? it's an Xbox Live Arcade game yeah. published by uh, 2K of all people. Yeah, see, so, yeah. the 2K odd gentleman. Yeah, yeah, the, the odd gentleman of the developers. The right? This is their yeah. debut title yeah. as well. This it's is their first game. Super it's solid. And this like isn't the first time that we saw this game. We saw it like a long time ago, and it felt and looked totally different. Yeah, yeah the art three in two thousand eight is when we saw yeah. it for the first time. So yeah, that's, that's two E3s right. ago where this game was uh, was being shown off. Yeah, and it showed a lot of promise then. It was a very interesting mechanic, and I appreciate it. But the art style was much more simplistic. It was a lot of flat stuff on the background, <laughs> and uh, it looked. There's, very there's good. another question. It's really good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, Bryce, what do you got? He wants to know. If you could clone yourself, uh, like what would you have your clone do? Well, I already did clone myself. This is, yeah. If you look at my shirt here, this is clear indication that this is my clone. Yeah. So I would probably be doing exactly what but I'm doing. Matt's, right Matt's now. back home, uh. like playing StarCraft II. Yeah, right? he, all, he, <laughs> all he does doing. is play with StarCraft II, yeah, and not, we have to deal with his Matt's fucking clone here. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that question by? Bryce? Uh, Bryce. Thanks, Bryce. Thanks, Bryce. Thanks, Bryce. Thanks for exposing my dastardly plot. Why don't you talk a little bit about your favorite thing about the game, the art direction? Yes, absolutely. And especially the posters. Like, just go into some of these stages okay. here, if we can show this to the people out there. Uh, these posters, like the, the introductory posters for each of the stages, are goddamn brilliant. Yeah, if they printed them, I'd buy them. Yeah, I would Absolutely buy a not. poster of each one of these. Like, a full, I could pace my entire wall with these. They tell a story. They have, they're super congruent with the aesthetic of the game. Right. Yep. And they're just great designs overall. I mean, like, if you've got a little bit of the designer bug in you, uh, then you can appreciate just the aesthetics of how these things are put together. Yeah, and adding to that, you know, each of the stages are broken up in a sort of storybook, poetry, little illustrations, title yeah. cards that, uh, if, you know, if for any stage you go to, they'll, they'll after they you're, are, you're like loading, it, things. it gives you these little, little funny little stories to read, and they rhyme, and they're just <laughs> like, they're always sort of silly, and it's just a nice way of passing, a way of telling a story and passing from each stage and to the, the next. The hint text, too, I mean, I'm in the middle of loading now, so you can't see it yet, but at the bottom of each stage, they'll have a piece of text that kind of 
is, you know, you think it's supposed to... They call to, it hint text. I use the term loosely. Yeah. Hint text. Yes. It, it, I mean, it, you'd think that it would teach you how to actually get through the stage, but ordinarily it's just insult, insulting you. I mean, he, <laughs> it starts to call you things like uh, crud, crud, crud set stash. and <laughs> button muff and just dumb things that whatever yeah. it feels like calling you. Right now it's telling me to twiddle the left stick. Yeah, this so is your, like your twiddle. tutorial, tutorial area. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, those things get really funny as, as you move on to yeah, the it's game. Yeah, kind of has that World of Goo vibe with the... Oh, with the science example. and world of goo, you know, they they had that that clever, you know, single line, couple line humor, and that's what the hint text reminds me of. Yeah, like from the sign maker. Yeah, yeah the sign maker. It's like an inside joke that you don't get till after you solve the puzzle. Yeah. You're like, yeah. oh, just like the rest right. of the narrative of the game. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But the aesthetics in the game too. I mean, you can see any of the backgrounds that we go to on any of the stages are just amazing. Mm -hmm. They're they're all uh, they're all hand painted and they're designed really well and and each uh, one of them is unique too. Yeah, exactly. Every single stage has a unique background to it, which is so uh, which is so important to the overall aesthetic. I just uh, I, I can't believe how much art actually went into this game. Yeah, yeah I completely agree. And um, then, oh, I'm sorry, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say another thing to add is the challenge rooms. Oh, totally. As you can do oh, yeah. after beating these at this bottom level, you have uh, five of them that open up, and what they do is they give you. You know, a room with pies, and they give you a time challenge to, to try to match to win a medal. But then they also set a limit for how many clones you want to try to accomplish mm -hmm. it by. And what's great about these is, like, while you're inside this, you can sort of take your time and figure it out, and there's no sort of restrictions, and it's keeping track there of how many clones you're using and how much time. The way I do it is I just sort of figure out the best way to do it. And then I'll go right back into it and sort of like see if I can actually meet those goals that they and have. And the crazy thing is, if you go to the leaderboards, you'll see so, so and so only used this many clones and they did it in this amount of time. And it keeps track of every time you spawn a clone. So even though it says six of six in the upper left hand corner, if you've respawned a clone like 17 times, it'll say 17 clones. Yes, yeah. exactly. So I, and like I'm you not look at these good like these dudes. How did this guy do it in six clones in 16 seconds? Or oh, the other guy did it in 19 seconds with three. Jesus, yeah. that is I, crazy. I just don't see how it's even possible. Yeah, I've gotten medals on a few of them. And they do sort of range, sort of like the regular puzzles, from being, uh, you know, sort of sort of simple to figure out to yeah. being excruciatingly hard. Yeah. But uh, it, it just adds a lot to the longevity of the game. Where after those 50 stages, you have these challenge modes that you can sort of like challenge yourself with. Right. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just kind of the it's it's the icing on the cake to a really solid package. And if you've got a few extra Microsoft points, PB worth. PB winner bottom is absolutely worth picking. Yeah, what is it? Eight hundred Microsoft points? I actually, I don't know. But it all, it? it's totally worth it, no yeah. matter yeah. the price. I mean, it's one of the the classiest and coolest uh, indie indie games that I've seen for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, everybody should play it. Yeah, everybody should play it. I don't know how else to say it. Yeah, so, def absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Get it. Get it. There. I'll get it. Get it. Big fans of Netflix, you know, I, we stream it to our 360, and 
it's a, it's a really cool service, and so we're really glad that they've been a longtime sponsor, so we're going to go ahead and do this. Uh, with more than 12 million members, Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, streaming movies and TV episodes over the Internet and sending DVDs by mail. For $8.99 a month, Netflix members can instantly watch unlimited TV episodes and movies streamed to their TVs, computers, Microsoft's Xbox 360, and Sony's PS3 game console, and coming this spring, Nintendo's Wii console. Yay! And they can receive unlimited DVDs delivered quickly to their homes. As a Netflix member, you get DVDs by mail in about one business day. Watch as many movies as you want. Shipping is free and there are no late fees or due dates. Unlimited plans that are just $8.99 a month. As a new member and a co-op viewer, you can get a two-week free trial membership by going to this URL on your screen. That's netflix.com slash co-op. Make sure you use this URL so that they know we sent you. the first two skate games they were about getting sponsored and becoming a legend mm -hmm. and with skate 3 it's more about co-op it's more about playing with your friends online and creating teams the co-op that you have in the regular game carries over your single player and in terms of your AI you know players that you have on your friends list will carry over you know they'll fill up the AI right. but the boards you create you know your your characters around the levels or the boards your friends make will carry over into your game and NPCs will be carrying them you know stickers you and your buddies make or that your buddies make in their game will get absorbed into your game and will pop up you know plastered all over the walls right. it's really cool the way they've done co-op in this game you know This is all part of a kind of more seamless integration that they've done, uh, even including the tricks. My favorite new trick that they've added is the dark slide, you know, that Rodney Mullen created. Right. And kickback, right. where you like do a kick flip, kick it back as a heel flip and land back on it. It's Among the new things though is the locations. Uh, Sam Van Alone is gone, right, so that now we're at uh, Port Caverton. And we have, uh, you know, a, a bunch of new parks inspired by real life locations. Right, like, like Santa you know, Rosa Skate Park. Yeah, we were talking about Santa Rosa and Cousins. We totally uh, based, you know, this part off Santa Rosa and that part's off Vancouver and this part's, you know, they, they cite real world locations to create this whole new skate experience. Well, and, and one of the greatest things is that you're rewarded with everything that you do. Right. So even if you play uh, challenges online, you go into contests with your teammates, you all gain XP, kind of like in Call of Duty, uh -huh. um, and you can like level up. Right, right, and I like the, I like the version of XP they use, which is boards, right? It's not, it's no longer points, you know, it's, which is an right. arbitrary number. Now you're it's, trying to build your label, right? It's all about board sales. So it's all about board sales. Even when you're offline, like say you've made, uh, you know, we make co-op boards, as many people that keep buying those, we, we actually get rewarded for it without even playing, so. Yeah, it's kind of like, wow. It's great. <laughs> You know, in that way, it's like marketplaces and all this stuff carries into your single player. Right. Yo, dude, I'm back here in this office busting my butt. Make sure you get out there and get some coverage so we can sling these boards, baby. Aye? Right? Peace. One of my favorite artists, actually, uh, Del the Funky Homo Sapien, is scoring all the music for this game. Uh -huh. Him and the Dust Brothers. Yeah. And uh, and, and that's great because Del has always been in skate culture. Uh -huh. That's that's how I, I heard of hieroglyphics was from skateboard videos. Right. And he seems like the perfect uh, musician to be in this game. Right. You know, Port Caverton is cool. So it's cool that they've kind of created this whole new skate zone. You know, the past two skates have been in the same spot, so they've opened it all up. And, you know, like the old skate, you can once again grab benches and move them and create skate zones. But beyond yeah. that, you can now create whole new skate parks, you know, just like Tony Hawk 2 way back in the day. They give you a big arena right. and you can buy parts with board sales that you've gotten. You can buy like extra ramps or extra graphics, but you have this roster of tools and you can make your like perfect skate park. Right. I mean, it's, it's really, it's a cool feature that I haven't seen, like I said, since Tony Hawk 2. Right. They said, like, the, this, the goal of this game was to kind of make it more than the players, right? So now they have teams, you know, you can have five friends be on a team and against, you know, battle against other teams. You can have your own skate label, you know, skate t-shirts, and this all feeds into the uh, rewards which work offline and online. So it's a cool new skate experience yeah. they're looking to create. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about this game and I'm, I'm excited about creating my own team. And, and a, a new park.
the dark though, it's like it hurts my eyes a little bit. It's a bit yeah, too it's bright. A little straining mm. a little. Oh, okay. too dark, dude. Split okay. the yeah, difference. A little bit in the middle. Halfway. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. What's going on? Oh, okay. Nice. Nice. Oh, that looks the like awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Squarespace, remember you can change the colors uh, in real yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Try yeah, green. Can... I like green. Okay, we'll do Green's green. my favorite Ooh. color. Ooh. That's super cool. Do blue. Oh, that's all right. You guys are changing the color. That's awesome. Nice. Do you like I think orange would be really good. Orange? Really? Like a, how about like an olive or a mauve or something? Yeah, they move up to like a yellow. Oh, 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 hold it. Go back. Go back. Go back. No, no, no. Go forward. Go back. Right there. Go back. We can make it over like a disco. Oh, like a brighter. Yeah, let's go. Look at the lights. Look at the color. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I can see that. Definitely. Oh, that's good. Square space. Square space. Square space to change your sight in real time. Your spots be look kind of shitty to me until we put it on the square space. Real time changing up your website. Square space does it in real time. If you want the website to look like a disco, hit this shit up, baby. You will see it in real time. Squarespace. Beautiful. Oh, that's awesome. That was good talk, guys. Not too bad. I like that color. Oh. Really ridiculous. I love that ad. <laughs> I, I love that ad. I love that ad. We did that, we did that in one take, I, and there's no yeah. audio edits in that. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to give props. I'm really excited about Skate 3, after, especially after seeing the footage you guys brought back. Yeah. I wasn't lucky enough to go with Jason and Cesar to look at it, but it looks great. And if you like the look of the place they were sitting during that skate piece, that's our friend Saran Norris's gallery. He's a local artist here. Paint stuff on uh, lots of murals. He makes t-shirts like this awesome one. Like this, this is a Saran t-shirt. It's awesome. Jason's gonna throw his uh, his URL in the co-op live done. Twitter feed. Oh, it's yeah, done. done. So yeah. yeah, if you want to go check out Saran stuff, or uh, check great out guy his, to boot. Yeah. His gallery is on a twenty fourth of Valencia. Yeah, that's Francisco. where we were at. Yeah. It's, yeah. So yeah, if you're in San Francisco, go Super check it out. Super cool space. He's even got like a little 3D interactive thing with a right there with your PlayStation controller. Like kind of walk around in his art in it's the gallery. Really it's cool. cool. Yeah. I'm sure we'll get back there again and show yeah. more people like what he's been working on because yeah. he's a really interesting guy. Absolutely. But speaking of cool shit. Yes. Um, I was lucky enough to be uh, asked to be an independent games festival, an IGF judge for mm -hmm. this Ooh. year's festival. Ryan's kind of a big deal. <laughs> I hate you guys. People know you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I was really, I was He's really huge excited. in Luxembourg. Yeah, yeah, in Europe. Yeah, no, uh, I, I really uh, enjoy the opportunity to do this because, you know, there's a, so many indie games out there. There's just so many. It's like hard to figure out what you should be playing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this, you know, gave me an opportunity to play what I knew would be some of the some of the best in uh, games that came out in. Well, that are coming out in 2010. I'm kind of jealous, actually. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it's, it was a really cool opportunity. So I've been doing it since the fall, and we just played the finalist in in the beginning of January and December. So uh, what really surprised me is that the main finalists in each of the main categories are really cool. But Which I you more, expect. Yeah, you expect that. But I, more recently, I started playing some of the student uh, IGF uh, finalists. And they're fantastic. In some ways, they're actually maybe better than the non-student ones. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a bold Ooh, statement. Controversial. <laughs> What's really cool about these games is that I don't know if it's the structure of the programs or what. They they feel really polished and really complete. Like one core idea, core gameplay mechanic or yeah. something like that. Yeah. It's super focused, super clean, and it's like a really um, complete experience well, when you try it out. I feel like these game design programs have refined themselves over the last several years especially to do exactly that. To, right. Instead of like having these students trying to create a triple A game in their senior year, they're like, all right, let's take this one core idea and execute it on it. Exactly. And so the first game that I want to show you today is a student IGF finalist. It's called Puddle, um, and it's made it's made by uh, a team of students in France, Puddle Team, and they went to a, a school called Enjmin, E-N-J-M-I-N. But it's, it's a really simple oh, form mechanic, as you can fail. see here. Oh, wow, <laughs> Jay, you suck. I did it already. <laughs> wow, way to ruin the footage, like Sorry. right the, in the, uh, right off the bat. The core mechanic of this game is not dissimilar from uh, Loco Roco, in that all you do is uh, hold the L and R triggers uh, to basically rotate the world, and you play as a I guess a puddle of fluid, yeah. and you're trying to make your way through these stages. Oh, um, I keep losing. This stage is a little hard, yep. and Jay can't seem to, to nail it. But 
that's that's the cool thing. I mean, when the game starts, the first the few, first few areas which we're skipping here are really really straightforward. It's basically like hold R trigger to win. Yeah, there's tutorial stages. Yeah, there's yeah. tutorial stages, and then here's when the actual mechanic starts getting a little trickier. But what I really liked about it, I mean, obviously the, the visuals have appeal. It reminds me a lot um, of World of Goo, I guess. And maybe it's because there's kind of these black silhouetted uh, structures and that sort of thing. Um, against, but it's really colorful and it's it's really happy and, and fun to look at. And the big thing is that even though the core mechanic never changes, it's always exactly the same. The stages themselves make the gameplay feel different. This is a perfect example. Oh of yeah, it. we're in the zero. This G. stage takes place oh, in yeah. zero G, and you're a glob of orange, orange juice, and you have to make your way through. And so the the way you play it feels totally different than the other stages that, you know, so, like the stage that we just showed, for so example. So do the different liquids have, like, different qualities? Do they all feel the same, kind of? They're just different color, or...? No, no, they actually do feel different. Um, the, w there are several of the stages where you, you feel like you're playing a, as a puddle of something, like, like this one where your orange juice, or something that has the viscosity of water. Mm -hmm. But there are other stages where you're, like, um, liquid metal or something like that, and everything feels really slidey, and so it's easy to make a mistake, like the stage that Jay was Jason, on in the beginning. Um, oh, oh, wait, Jay. Oh, Jason? Jason, Jason, no, Jason what, what, what can uh, I do for you? <laughs> Lucas wants to know, uh, do the puddle physics remind you of Pixel Junk Shooter? Mm, not really. I mean, it's, it's, it's really straightforward. You don't ever, like, shoot or you don't because you are the world and all you do is tilt you don't really like enjoy the fluid mechanics or the fluid dynamics as much as you do in something like pixel junk shooter but it is really well done it's yeah. just that you don't ever really get have like objects to interact with them with you know very much it's just like all you do is kind of move them through the stages so and i feel like this game is it, it purposefully breaks down the, the the liquids, the puddle, whatever you want, to a minimum amount, like a little droplet, right. and it never gets smaller than that. Right. Whereas Pixel Junk Shooter really, or Pix, or <laughs> yeah, Pixel Junk Shooter seemed to have a much more rich fluid dynamic simulation right. involved. And, which, you know, which to which is a credit to this game's design. You know, they didn't want to break it down any smaller because it basically become impossible. And it, like I said, it's what what really surprised me and what I really enjoy about this game is just how polished the whole experience is. I mean, it's not even just the visuals obviously look cool, right? I right. mean, there's these beautiful lighted arrows and just like every part of it feels really detailed. And like I said, it has that sort of world of goo yeah. um, kind of graphic style that I really enjoy. But beyond that, I mean, the it's just one simple mechanic that they they really did handle really, really well. And everything sort of works, and each new stage feels a little bit different than the one that came before it. Right. And it's over, you know, relatively quickly. Like we could probably beat the whole thing here in this one sitting if we sat down and put our mind to it. And if or if Jay Fresh didn't, if I wasn't suck. like dying terrible. all the time. I like the, the zero G is really cool because it. You know, you're rotating the world, but you have a limited amount. And it's not like the other ones where it's just gravity playing into effect. It's mm. the way it's floating around. You have to sort of like I really have to, be have some finesse in a stage like I this. I feel like mm. on this stage, like you actually have to do the opposite of what you think you should have yes, to do. Yes, exactly. And that's what threw me off the first time I was playing it. But it made it more fun once I sort of figured it out. Yeah. Do you have? Is it a question, Jason? Uh, uh, we were kind of giggling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alexander, <laughs> okay, never mind. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Alexander wants to know: Is uh, urine a playable liquid? Is urine a playable liquid? <laughs> Not yet, but um, kind mean, of. You never know. Maybe they'll they'll uh, this <laughs> this version will get picked up by a larger publisher, yes. and then they can expand it. There is one cool stage that. Jay probably won't make it to. How do I lose no, my puddle? Because he can't play it here. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, okay, so, to, to, uh, you know, to, to give Jay a break here, like, the system that we're operating on, we actually have a delay in yeah, the monitor that we're seeing. True. So we're op we're operating on a little bit of a delay. So yeah. that's got to be it. It's not that Jay totally sucks. I don't totally no, suck at He doesn't game. totally suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A few people are wondering, I'm just giving him a hard time. Uh, a few yeah. people are wondering, um, like, what other platforms this is going to be available for. Like, well, we're playing it on PC right now. Yep. Right. Yeah, that's just it. Is Who knows? I yeah. mean, it's a student project. They got it done. And uh, since we probably won't make it much farther than this, I guess I can sort of end by saying that, you know, this game is available now. Like, this mm. is a student project, and if you want to play it on your PC right now, the only requirement really is that you have an Xbox 360 controller, wired one to plug in so that you can control it. But uh, it's available now from puddle-game.com. Yeah. So give it a try. I mean, download it, see what you think. And it's it's great because this is just one of the maybe 10 uh, student IGF finalists. And they're all 
most almost all of very high quality like this, but they're totally different games. Right. Like one of them that I played was called Barukadin Ru, which is kind of a, a old school graphical adventure game uh, with 320 by 180, you know, bitmap graphics. It looks really right. blocky, but it's it's like a blade, really Blade Runner esque. It's like super duper fun to play. Yeah. And then there's a, you know, other games like. A, the new game by Digipen, you know, the who won uh, the Student IGF last year with Tag, and the uh, uh, what did they, oh they did a Nomacular Drop, which exactly. became Portal. Got you know? them hired in Valve so they could do Portal. So yeah. it, it's clear that the, you know the Digipen has like a legacy to live up to these right. days. And their their new game is called Dreamside or Dreamside Maroon, I believe. Mm. And you're it's basically like a, a vine growing game. It's super relaxing, super simple, but just gorgeous to look at and. Mm. You know, just a fine example of how each one of these games is like totally, totally different, but equally fun to play. And I'm hoping that more of the student IGF games become available if they're not they're not already. Well, and that's kind of kind of like back to the last user question. You know, it's like where he was seeing where he was asking where are these games available. Well, that's sort of one of the things that the IGF does is like these people can kind of get discovered, you know? Like, they can be a student game or they can be an indie game and then suddenly there they are on Xbox Live Arcade or there they are as a PS3 downloadable title. I mean, that's happened to several of these people. Right, I mean, then th that's just the thing with, with something like Puddle. You know, I don't even know if I'd want to play much more than what they've, they've shown here, you know? But the, the short of it is that it, it, it works, you know? Yeah. It was like, I can't think of many things that would be a better sort of like proof of concept to prototype and then like actually do a, fun, a full version of and just nail like if I had done a project I think back to I didn't go to game school I right. went to film school right. but I think back to the final projects that we did and uh, you know they didn't feel as complete it's not something that I would right now want to show all my friends and say look I did this right. but mm -hmm. if I had made puddle like oh yeah I would be showing that off for years like this is what I did in school yeah. right and if you're gonna do if you can do something that's that high quality in school what are you gonna do when you get out into the real world. Yep, and, uh, it's it's the best resume. You and, can you know, ask really, for. another good thing about something like that too is someone who went to school for game design is that it's when you're being an artist, especially, it's it's very insular. You're typically just dealing with other artists. So yeah. you have other people that are in the same major. Right. And when you get further along and you are given these projects, it's your first time where you need to interact with engineers and programmers right. and people from different disciplines. And it's very and that's part of game development is that. So it's I think it's really helpful for students to have to learn at that point. You know how to work with people at different disciplines. Definitely, Definitely. which is great. So okay, so the student IGF was rad. Yep, totally rad. But. That's not to say that the regular IGF competitors didn't do a great job. Would the, you say that the IGF will be a totally rad show? It hey, will be a totally I think rad, be a totally rad, rad yeah, show. Yeah, I would go check that out. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> the all the the Seamus McNally finalists are really you know polished and cool games, but uh, the one that jumps out at me is a game that's made by Pocket Watch Games, and the the lead developer on this is Andy Schatz, and it's called Monaco, and. Uh, Man, I love their menu that they have here. Yeah, it's a great menu. You can, let's let's show people. It's what we're a great like here. starter menu there. It's it just really has cool. a really like great art direction. Um, it it's very low, resol. I mean, it's not low resolution, but it's very right. bitty. It looks. It has this sort of great retro feel, but the mechanics aren't retro at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it's a, basically a co-op heist. Game. Yeah, it's it, it reminds me of a of a heist movie or a prison break movie. Or they something have like different like that. classes here. You can. It's pick. meant yeah. to be played with uh, up to four people, and as you can see, he's moving be between each of the classes. Mm -hmm. And the way that it works is that why don't you choose whichever class you'd like? Maybe the locksmith. That yeah, sounds that's good. A safe, safe bet. Um, each each class, every character, no matter who you choose, can do something. Oh, these are the great cutscenes. The <laughs> the game is played from a bird's eye perspective. It's all overhead, but at the beginning of each stage, they do. Uh, these kind of side-scrolling um, cutscenes here, and if all four players were, you can see that they're lighting up. There's a blue guy. This is the actual stage. This is how it starts. Um, each character class can do everything in the game. You'll see these icons like that. See the locks? Those are uh, lock, lock doors that you can go through. That arrow there is a window that you can climb through. And because Jay's uh, specialty is lock picking, he can't quite make it through that window as fast as he can the locked door. Gonna chase now. But if he was playing as the Prowler, he would be able to make his way Climb through right the windows window. as fast as he can go through. But the you door can now. see, like, whenever he runs into a locked door, he he goes through it like almost instantly. Right. Yeah, like this guy right here. It's a piece. Of, oh, where did I go? There I am. There's a lot of uh, darkness. I don't know why. Can can we bring up the black levels a little bit, guys? 
the uh, but I mean, the, the, it's not that. Eh, oh well. Yeah. We're shooting off a screen here, so this isn't really the most optimal condition to show this game in. But you can get the the core idea, which is that you know there's this kind of um, cones of vision, right? That each of the characters have. You know, actually, see, I think it's bugging, bugging out. out. Yeah. I think it's bugging you, uh, out. Can oh, you quit this stage and let's let's try it again? Yeah, let's try loading another stage. We're gonna try to load a stage here. I want to show you this so, game the way it's actually. It's right. live. Do you have a qu Eric's got a question. All right, let's take know, a question. Uh, are the majority of the games you saw from XNA Tools? Not not all of them. Um, I, I, there there are definitely some like completed Flash games. Flash was a big a big. Uh, a big source of a lot of the games that mm. made it into the IGF this year, and it's weird because I don't think of Flash games as games that I really like, fully enjoy. But I played a lot of really, really good ones this year. Like uh, Rocket Birds Revolution was one of them. Right. And I'm trying to think, oh, uh, one of my favorite games that's a uh, Seamus McNally finalist is called Trauma. I think I've talked about it on uh, Rebel yeah. FM before. It's like a, it actually kind of looks like a, I don't know. Uh, like you're navigating the world through Google Street View, but it's like an adventure puzzle game. Yeah. Um, I think well, it is. I think the game I think is, the still, game is still a little buggy. I'm gonna go yeah. ahead right now and restart it. Why don't you guys take another community question? Yeah, yeah. So like, talk to us, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, handling questions. handling the PC games, unfortunately, yeah. you can, you can yeah. get well, that. Well, and that's another thing is that like when we're like we're seeing, like Ryan was seeing a lot of these games in really early development, yeah, yeah. and so a lot of them were really buggy. And like while he was while he was like checking them out, new versions would become available from the developers right away. So we were actually a little bit worried that that Monaco might just decide to suddenly become buggy. I mean, it's actually not Monaco; it's the camera, it's, guys. Uh, it it's looks really good on the screen there. So ah. it's, the, it's your exposure or black levels. Something's wrong, but uh, it looks great on the screen. So let's hear a uh, question. Yeah, there's a lot the of questions. Just community. people asking, like, where could they play some of these games? Well, um, if you make it to the to the IGF at the at GDC 2010, starting in a couple weeks from now, you'll definitely be able to play them. Um, but some of them are already released. Rocket Birds Revolution is online. Like, if you search for that on Google right now, you'll find it. Nice. Um, Monaco, I'm I'm hoping is going to be released for definitely PC and uh, well it would be great to see it on either of the two HD consoles that are out right, right. Um, it even you know the core mechanics are fun I mean we're, we're having trouble seeing them right here which is you know it's kind of a bummer but the it is it is a would be a great game to play with a bunch of people and it has a, a level editor as well so if you got to the point where you were tired of the stages that are already in the game, or if you play them so many times that you kind of, because they're not randomly generated, they right. are very distinct, each one. There's plenty of them, so, and there's so many different characters to play as that, you know, I, I feel like there's a lot of replay value in this game. The same way that Left 4 Dead doesn't have the most stages ever, but, you know, you can play through them different ways and right. have a good time trying well, with Well, and I can totally see Monaco sort of stuff. being super valuable as a four player thing, you know, because if, you, if you've got like the, the medic guy with you and you've got the guy that can knock out guards, and and you got the and you got the uh, the locksmith with you and the security guy. You know, like you you mix and match these different abilities. And there's some that we haven't even unlocked, so we we don't know what all is going, what is planned for this game. But imagine moving all those together, and like when you the map looks kind of like a uh, like a floor plan. You know? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so there you are, like going going through windows. I think that you could going through windows, hacking security locks, attacking guards. You could really come together with a, with a plan. Go, and make it happen. Go back to that first. So see right here, he's like, uh, I hacked, security, he's got a, so I see he's hacked the security system. Oh, so he's got yeah. a security camera view of the world. And he can see oh, like, right now in. that there's a security guard coming to grab him. Gotta, that, that's that, just that's a, cool how the light is his field of view there. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, let me see if I can, I'm going to hop in the game here and see if I can uh, help me out. Help you out and brighten it up a little bit. So for uh, Puddle and uh, Monaco, mm -hmm. like how big were those uh, to the, or how big were the dev teams is one of the questions. Uh, that's a good question. The, mm -hmm. the team for Monaco is really small. I mean, I think most of the core design was done by the one guy, Andy Schatz. I mean, he had some help with the music and uh, huh. and some maybe a few others. But when I remember when I was looking at the credits, I was like, yeah, that pretty much seems like a, uh, mostly a one-man job. Right. And um, Puddle was a few more than that. You know, it looked like a kind of small classroom's worth of people, 10, 15 people right. at most. Um, Oh, so yeah, it, it, what I about PB Winterbottom? The Odd Gentleman? How many of those are what there? What is it? Like, like six guys? Yeah, it's something. It's, it, it's a I very think of the credits, well. it looked like six. Yeah. yeah, it's another really small team. I mean, yeah. and that's just it. Is you really can make some great gameplay experiences just 
as as one person, you know. Right. But um, a small team can really nail it if if they try and well, focus. I think, and I think PB Winterbottom shows that if you have great aesthetic and great art along with great gameplay design, you can still execute on these really fantastic ideas without it being a triple-A title. Right. Well, I mean, a triple-A budget title. Right, yeah. And then, uh, but a game like Monaco has really, really, uh, like you said, biddies, simpler graphics, but like it's a concept that's executed really well and the aesthetic is carried through throughout the entire game. So it still comes across as really high quality and it's yeah, a I, lot of fun to play. I apologize that we can't show you a better looking version of it. We had technical problems all the way leading up into this yeah. live show and our yeah. like direct feed wouldn't come out of our computer properly it's yeah. just like, I would oh, it's, it well, just looks stuff like you got to deal with but uh, yeah. it's it's not that big a deal it just um, looks like the exposure level's not um, up high yeah. Phil Fish is uh, saying Monaco is a XNA game there you oh, go Monaco is XNA so, there yeah. you go Thanks, oh Phil. yeah I was I was fairly certain that Monaco yeah yeah Monaco is XNA but the question was asking how many of the games were XNA games in IGF right. and you know not all of them are yeah but uh, yeah this is an XNA game definitely you know, one thing I like that when we were playing this is that, you know, in, in this prison, you know, you, your only two objectives are to get the little trophy yeah. icon, find that in the stage, and then uh, get to your getaway truck. So you're just basically looking on the map for those two icons for you to move on to the next area. And what's cool is that after I first time I beat it, it's mm -hmm. like I did like 17% completion. Right. Because there's all these other rooms and everything that you can sort of dig around and, and get gold yeah, coins. You're, yeah, you're grabbing these little like coins. I mean, it's very old school Mario. Yeah. There's coins scattered around the stage. There's a bunch of them popping up right there. And you know that's your main goal is to try to get those. And each each of the different classes has like specialized items. Like uh, you, if you're playing as the hacker, you can drop a security camera that shows just a little bit of the world around you. If you're playing as a prowler, you can uh, or a brawler maybe you can like walk up and actually take down a single security guard. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I love that guy. That's yeah, like my one. Or as a locksmith, you, like, you can. Uh, right I think it's the medic. The medic can chloroform guards. Right, that's right. Yeah. And you can, you can, like another class can drop a smoke bomb and get away easily if guards find you. So there's just so many different options in the gameplay that you can like uh, find if you, you know, spend a lot right. of time with this game. Right. And it's really, you know, the type of thing that I think is gonna demand replays. I, yeah, definitely. But, Especially um, if you're going for 100% on the stages. Yeah, definitely. And there's so many classes to unlock as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, basically, it's not like we had a ton of time today to talk about games, and we just showed you three different indie games that we've been playing recently. Um, but there's so many good ones out there, and, uh, you know, I, I, I wish, you know, I guess I wish that the, the gaming press focused a little bit more on some of these games, because it just... It's, it's, it makes people like us who do play them feel like we're inundated and we don't even know what to cover because there's just too many. And I hope that you uh, get a chance to look at some coverage of uh, the IGF once the GDC rolls around this year in a couple of weeks and uh, really seek out these games. If you have a chance to play them yourself, it's, it's How they're really good stuff. How many did you play stuff. to judge total? Over 30, wow. 40. Wow, yeah. wow. So it's... Uh, and there's they, a lot they of just games. Keep narrowing them down, basically. Yeah, and and the there's, signing of there's the also the IGF mobile. Tons of good mobile games wow. as well. So there's really a lot of good games to play if you if you seek them out. It just seems to be getting better and better with each year at the yeah, IGF for GDC. It's just the yep. quality just keeps getting better. Right. So uh, we also want to thank GoDaddy for sponsoring our, our show. They've been a longtime sponsor as well. Yep. Um, get reliable, secure web hosting without the long-term contract. GoDaddy's hosting plans are bigger and better than ever with 99% uptime free 24-7 support, and no annual commitment. When you sign up, use the promo code CO13 and get 20% off a one, two, or three-year hosting plan. All right. And so now what we're going to do is go into just general community stuff. So everybody out there, talk Ask us your us. questions. Yeah. So Bring make, sure, make sure you tweet to at Co-op Live and Jason here. Who's going to be um, our moderator yeah. still? Well, this goes back to Monaco, but um, uh, does it have uh, co-op or uh, like um, online co-op or anything? It like that? looks like the version that I I've, I've been playing just has local co-op, and to me, it seems like that's the way you'd want to play it. But I mean, I can see it working as an as an online game as well, and I wouldn't sure. put it by him, you know, if the game eventually comes out for other platforms. Who knows? Maybe it'll come with online. Co -op. And it's up to yeah. four players. Up to four players. Cool. But the yeah. version that I played was local co-op. 
Uh, this question that just popped up. Kyle wants to know if heavy rain will be on next week. Yeah, I, I don't hope know. So. I'm going to endure the heavy <laughs> rain tonight in San Francisco <laughs> and run out and get my copy of heavy You're rain. You're so punny. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I've been really looking forward to playing it. We I think did, we all have. We, yeah. we didn't yeah. get early copies of it, and so we're running out and buying it at, at GameStop tonight. Like, yep. man, maybe many of the rest of you guys. We'll play yep. that until Lost comes on, and then maybe go play. And then play and watch Lost, later. and then play yeah. heavy rain after. That's, that's way up there on our list. We're really excited. We're really to check looking it out. forward yeah, to it. Yeah. That's a game I've been looking forward to for a very long time. And you guys were you guys are big fans of uh, Indigo Prophecy, the ones that, yeah. the game they did before this. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. first two thirds. Yeah. 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 I'm a big I fan really of the like beginning it. of the really game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's um, right. Up until like you have to fight the internet. Well, I was I was not a big fan before I had to fight the internet. You know, the the internet was the the nail that broke the camel's back. Wait, not to mix metaphors. That's all I know how to do, guys. It's awesome. Um, uh, Carl wants to know um, if, what uh, new iPhone indie games that uh, we've been playing. Oh, good God. Oh, you got um, an answer to that. Uh, yeah, the one, one, well, the one I was playing yesterday was uh, Colorblind, which he actually, uh, that's what he's playing also. That, um, yeah, I started <laughs> playing that as well. It's a great game. It's, and the other iPhone game I've been playing, which isn't an indie game, but uh, <laughs> Plants vs. Zombies, I yes! can't stop playing. I've beaten it twice already. Yep. Yeah. Um, I've been fact, playing... I've been playing Auditorium, which isn't, it's been out for a couple of months Fun now. Fun game though. We, we originally played it when we were at 1UP on PC. There was a Flash version that was available wow, online. Wow, was that long ago? It was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, wow. But uh, the, I, I remember when we were playing it on Flash, uh, <laughs> or on PC, yeah. we were saying like, oh, this I would be a great iPhone game. Yep, and it's perfect it for certainly it. is. I mean, yeah. unlike something like Plants vs. Zombies. I'm not saying it's not great on the iPhone. Don't get me wrong. I do have to show this show off. It. My, my oh, Plants yeah. vs. Cool. Zombies iPhone skin. That's really cool. Show that camera. That camera. There we go. I want Ooh. one. Ooh. I didn't get that. Yeah. It's super awesome. <laughs> yes. But uh, I love Plants vs. Zombies on Plants vs. Zombies is a great game. It's really great on iPhone. The interface it is great. It has some great, slowdown. But that's the problem, yeah. is that it does slow down like a mofo if you're yeah. playing on anything less than probably a 3GS. We don't yeah. know because we don't have that's one. That's the only thing that yeah. stopped me from getting it, is I have a first generation iPod. So it's just like... I yeah. know I'm gonna run into knows, that, yeah. uh, that it's problem. It's not. It, it's never unplayable, but it, it does slow down. Something like Auditorium, on the other hand, I haven't had any problems with slowdown at all. Um, the the core. It's 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 kind of like Enigma, which was one of the really early iPhone games where you have uh, a couple shapes that kind of bend these like fluid light particle waves, particle wave sources, yeah. and you're trying to kind of like make this pattern work. It's kind of like an incredible machine sort of game, something like that, but I think it's relatively inexpensive and it's definitely worth playing yeah. if you've never played uh, a game like Auditorium. Uh, <laughs> check it out, really awesome. Um, Nelson asked, what is everybody's favorite uh, piece or toy on the set? Okay. Ooh, that's when a good look. question. Okay, well, <laughs> are you gonna I use can the go Starcraft right away. Box? My favorite yeah. thing, yeah. this is my Star League collection box set. That are we on this one again? No, we're on this. We're on the clock over here. Is a Star League collection, and this is uh, the best of uh, Slayer underscore Boxer, who is the best Terran StarCraft player in the world. I bought this when I was in Korea, and uh, we've watched these. And these are some of the most incredible StarCraft matches I have ever seen yeah. in my life. I couldn't believe it. When if you want to see people excited about something that you wouldn't imagine people could get that excited about, then you got to watch these There, these there are pictures of like girls in the front of the audience when it looked like Boxer was going to lose, like crying, tearing their hair out. You know? I mean, wow. outdoor concert arenas that look like a place where, you know, a Britney Spears, the Backstreet Boys should be playing. And that, that amount of crowd, that amount of like lighting and production, yeah. it's all just two people on stage playing StarCraft. Yeah. It's pretty I don't incredible. even remember what's all in this, but I do remember that my... Uh, Is that first, a t-shirt? Yeah, that's a t-shirt that I've never opened. It's in like a oh astronaut packaging. But here, here's my favorite thing. Check this out. <laughs> oh, wow. Those are the... Uh, Wow! <laughs> that is yeah, the guy. That boxer. That Woo! guy plays StarCraft. Yeah. Look at that. He's a this guy's like a StarCraft pretty boy. It's All right. great. What about you, Ryan? My favorites. I'm, I, I can't. I'm just. I can never pick just one thing. So I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna point out some of my favorites. I really like even. Even though it's not my well, the painting is great. <laughs> Cesar's, Cesar's talking in our ears. Cesar's about talking painting. in our ears. He's like the painting that I painted. A lot of people ask us where the painting came yeah. from. Cesar made the painting. Cesar with did this paint that ball. himself. Yeah. Yeah. So that he's. It, it's, it's one of a kind. It's it's a really nice painting. What can I say? I wasn't sure if it was gonna be awesome, but he kicked the shit out of it. It looks rad. Um, my favorite things up here, even though it's not mine, I love the Quake 3 Arena tin. 
I had one of those <laughs> when the game precious. first came out, but I lost it. And so Fresh has has one. Space Channel Five, one next to it is pretty awesome too. That is cool. I really like this Lego Goomba right here. That was made by a friend of ours, Amber Cox. Uh, she gave it to me for my birthday. I like this Street Fighter soap. <laughs> I got this when Street Fighter 4 came came out. I don't remember exactly when, but it's Street Fighter soap. Awesome. Yeah. Yoshi. Yoshi. Now, there's there's quite a few things here um, that I actually fl flew in from Michigan. Um, when I worked at GameStop for like six years, um, all the stuff that would penny out, any GameStop employees will know exactly yeah, I know what, what mean. I mean when I say <laughs> penny out, would penny out or uh, just stuff that the marketing materials they would throw out, my brother and I would keep them. We would drive them home and like fill up our basement. So we had like standees, uh, the, we had like this Xbox light up switch that's over here. <laughs> um, just really obnoxious stuff. So my parents were nice enough to send it off. But these guys, I have Mario, I have Bowser. I don't know if he still works, but they all like voiced up. And I've had these things for like nine, 10 years. All right. These guys have like made it with last, me. Last been on my question, desk. guys. It's just been last awesome. question. All right, all right. All right. This, this, is, this is a pretty big one too. Okay. Uh, did you guys always want to be a, um, a critic on the side, um, a critic side of the video game industry? Or did you guys want to be on the other side making games? Ooh. You know, that's a tough question because at every time in my life I've wanted to do both. I, at, at alternate times in my life I wanted to do one or the other. When yeah. I was a kid I thought I wanted to make games, but as I grew older I kind of realized that that wasn't something that I was interested in. Um, it's funny because now it's kind of moving back the other direction again where I could see myself doing yeah. it mm -hmm. because the tools are getting better. Like it's mm -hmm. getting to the point where a smaller, you know, there's a time when it looked like you had to be involved in like a 300 person team if you wanted to actually make a game, but it's getting to the point where obviously or you had to that's- to go into programming or something. Exactly. Yeah. And obviously that's not true anymore. Um, so I could see it again, but no, I've, I, I love, I love a lot of games. And I don't think that, uh, you know, I think if you work on at, on a team making a game, you, you got to, to some extent, limit your exposure to everything that's coming out. It's true. And um, You don't get to play as, much, as many games. Exactly. Either, yeah. And that just doesn't sound as appealing to me. And, you know, whatever. I, I like talking about games. I like comparing them to other games. And I just don't see myself stopping yeah. anytime soon. Yeah. Well, so I think we're wrapping it up. The last thing that I, that me and Yoshi are gonna pimp is that we've got t-shirts for got them. sale. Mm, yep. yep. So if you, uh, there's at the that URL. website, go Our there. Our friends at Attract Mode set up yeah. a storefront for us Attract so that we can start selling t-shirts. These are pre-orders right now, so. Uh, Yoshi really, really wants you to go to our store and order a shirt. <laughs> Do it, Sorry, you say no to Yoshi? No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I you know guess. what? I need a drink. I need two drinks. I, I need to go buy Heavy Rain <laughs> and a drink. We do need to go do that. Yeah, we got the pre order to go Thanks for watching. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. This is a fatality. I'll be your lightning gun. I'll turn it fire. I'll be your player to 1080p. I'll be that memory card that you back up on. What if life was more? Like a video game We would play it all call We would play it all